Hey guys, Dennis Takuma here today, and today I want to talk to you about something incredibly serious that happens way too often and is really uncomfortable for a lot of people to think about. I'm going to talk to you about theft and embezzlement from your company. Now in the last five or six years, I've had several clients who've actually been embezzled by their bookkeepers from the company side of things. Now there's reasons why this happens. Number one, if you have a sole in-house bookkeeper, you're giving them way too much control. They've got way too much look at your way too many ways to look at your numbers, way too many ways to modify and edit things that just go above your purview or go around. You don't even know what's happening because they're the ones that are presenting the reports for you. Why does this happen? Number one reason. You feel like you don't know enough about your own numbers to make good decisions, and so you abdicate versus delegate. I don't have time to deal with it, I don't have time to worry about it. I'm going to abdicate to somebody else. So you give it to them. The second people mis the second mistake people make is giving them the ability to have signing authority on their accounts. Now this doesn't happen very often, but it does happen where you basically just say, look, just take care of it. Here's the checks, here's this, here's that. Go write the checks, go do what you have to do, send them out. Now, most people go, well, Dennis, I don't, I, in fact, here's the interesting part is the clients who've been embezzled from never actually gave signing authority to their bookkeepers. They just didn't really look at the checks that were being written. They just quickly went through and they signed them to ensure that things were getting out because they were busy, they were in a hurry and they had to keep things moving. So after a while, the bookkeeper was able to slide things in there that they were to sign off on and they didn't even think about it. It was like little changes to payroll that shouldn't have been there. Ways of, of moving around EI and CBP and things that shouldn't have happened. They were they created shell companies that had very similar names to the vendors that these people were supposed to be paying. There's all kinds of ways these bookkeepers were embezzling money from this business. So there, I, I can't even get all the creative different ways that they do it, but there's so many different ways they do it. And the number one reason why they get away with it is because of abdicating. I'm going to give it to you to, to, to just go do it for me. So here's some things you can do to protect yourself from embezzlement. Number one, make sure that every couple of years you're switching your bookkeeping staff. Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass. Yes, I know it's a nightmare, especially if you're shifting accountants and they want to take everything over because they always want to go back five years and charge you more money for it. But the advantage of switching things up every couple of years is that the new accounting firm or the new bookkeeper is going to go back for the most part and dig to make sure why isn't everything reconciling. And you'll be able to find holes pretty quick and go after your previous bookkeeper if they did steal stuff from you before they grab your money, flee the country, and you're kind of SOL. The second thing is make sure that your accounting and bookkeeping are done at two completely different companies. Don't make, make sure that it's like, oh, well, I'm helping out mom and pop or Sally or Jimmy or Johnny, whoever it is, because I, I really like them. So I'm going to have them handle both my accounting and my bookkeeping. Don't do it. Have a separate bookkeeper and a separate accountant that take care of things. Now, I also don't agree that every accountant is a great accountant or every bookkeeper is a great bookkeeper. So you might have to search around to find a good accountant and go off referrals and go off other things because I believe in the Pareto principle. 80% of accountants aren't really that good and 20% are really good. Just like 80% of contractors aren't that good and 20% are really good. It's just the way the math plays out. So you're gonna have to find the right accountant for you and then switch every couple of years because the new account is going to work harder to check things out and make sure that stuff wasn't missed. The third thing you want to do to protect yourself is one, have your bookkeeper create a training program for you on how they do the bookkeeping. And then you want to be able to follow that same system and go through and be able to follow it to the bookkeeping yourself if you had to. Now, if they give you a ton of flack about it, I don't understand why you want all this. I don't understand why you need it. I've been doing so well for you for so many years and they have all this excuses for not doing it, that's a massive red flag. Remember, they work for you, you don't work for them. If they're not willing to put together something to show you the steps that they take or bring in some accountability or bring in some sort of process, chances are there's a major red flag that you gotta be digging a little bit deeper and going, why are they avoiding a simple task of building a training tool or a training process to help me understand how my own numbers work? Next thing you need to do is educate yourself on how the numbers work. You've got to know what's, what you're responsible for for payroll. You've got to know what you're responsible for for taxes. You've got to know what your expenses are supposed to be. You've got to know what your cost of goods are supposed to be. You need to be able to have a tracking tool that you look at these numbers every single month on a consistent basis. Now, every one of our clients gets one of these because it allows them to completely identify what's going on in their numbers and makes them some serious homework to go through and fix some stuff. Yeah, homework sounds scary. Don't want to do it. But you fix the process. And next thing you know, you can build a system that ensures you stay protected every step of the way. And you're not going to be in a situation where you're like, well, I didn't see that coming. I don't know why this happened. So as you're going through and looking at your bookkeeping, number one, make sure that you're switching bookkeepers every couple of years. Now, if you've built a proper training tool for your bookkeeping, bringing a new bookkeeper up to speed is not hard to do. You can get them up to speed in less than 30 days. But if you don't have a training tool, it could take months and months and months and months for them to catch up. 
So you have a good training tool in place to know how your next bookkeeper is going to come up to speed. Number two, as much as possible, make sure your bookkeeper isn't in-house. Hire a third-party company that comes in and looks at stuff for you because at least that way they've got more than one client and you're able to protect yourself a little bit better. Number four, or number three, I guess, make sure that your bookkeeper and your accountant are not the same company. Make sure you switch them up. And just like your bookkeeper with your accountant, switch every couple of years because your accountant is going to go through and your new accountant is going to go through and they're going to do the books a little bit more in depth than the previous one did because they want to earn your business and know what's going on and make sure that everything has been covered. Number four, make sure you understand how your, tra- how your actual accounting works, what you're responsible for, what you need to do, what you don't need to do, and know how your numbers lay out so you know how to track them every single month so you know what's happening and what's going on. You can make decisions. Don't abdicate this. Don't just look at your bank accounts for this information. Actually dig deep and know what's going on here. Number five, make sure you have a training tool and process in place to train your next bookkeeper that's coming up because of the proper training tool in place and proper things that are in place, You'll never have to worry about the slow uptake speed of having a new bookkeeper come on board. You'll be able to flip through it quickly and be able to get the new one up on speed as fast as possible. Now, I'm pretty sure there was another tip in there that I had for you, but I have to go back to the beginning of the video and rewatch. So as you're going through, just remember, your numbers are your responsibility. They're not your bookkeeper's responsibility. Never abdicate this to somebody else. Stay in control, stay on top, know what's happening, and don't wait too long to start doing it. If you're a small company, start doing it now before you start getting into the bad habits of pushing things off to people. If you're a larger company, make sure you're doing it now so you can go back and fix any problems before you go to sell your company and it's too late or you can't figure out why you can't make bank or you can't make cash flow or what's happening, why am I so far backwards, why am I so stressed out, all the numbers seem to be coming in together but there's nothing left. Oh, that was the last one. The last tip was this. If you ask your bookkeeper to help you build a training program or teach you how they do the numbers and they get nervous and they come up with excuses or they get unhappy with the reports that you're wanting them to do or whatever, that's the sign that you got to start getting rid of them. They're uncomfortable because they're doing something wrong. Now, it's not always the case. It's not always the case. But if they're giving me flack about me asking them to do something for me because they work for me, I don't work for them, and they don't want to do it, use it as a massive warning sign and figure out why they don't want you to do it. Dig deep fast. Hope this helps. Till next time.